Hello everyone, and today I will go over 10 mods that breathe fresh life into your Bannerlord campaigns. These mods aim to add more diversity to Bannerlord's characters rather than completely overhaul its gameplay, and as a result should be highly compatible with most other mods that aren't total overhauls. Now before we get into the mod list, if you enjoy my videos, take a moment to like and subscribe as it would really help out the channel and hit that bell icon for notifications for new uploads. Starting with the first mod on our list, Commanders and Conquerors is a mod that makes it so, like the player, other clans can hire companions to lead their parties out in the campaign. In native, AI clans are restricted on party limits, just like the player. Most clans can only field two to three parties at a time, and when they are defeated, if they have any other clan members waiting, they will take to the field. This is usually several non-combat focused members with non-existent tactics or leadership skills and effectively taking valuable commander slots from the AI. But with hired companions, if a clan loses their parties, a more combat and leader focused companion party will emerge to fill the ranks. This results in larger armies and more epic battles for you to enjoy throughout your campaign. Houses of Calradia is a marriage flavor mod that dictates how the AI handles marriage between clan members. You can customize it to allow marriage between any clan regardless of culture or kingdom, or restrict it to kingdom only, culture only, or kingdom and culture only marriages, so bloodlines can be as mixed or pure as you want them to be. Succession Crises pairs well with Houses of Calradia, as it changes how Kingdom Secession plays based on culture. In vanilla, when a Kingdom ruler dies, a vote gets cast for the next faction leader, picked between the three most suitable candidates. This oftentimes includes the player if they are a vassal, which in many cases will make little to no sense at all. Some examples of the new inheritance laws within the Empire are as follows. The Senate Elective, which resembles the Native Inheritance, is used by the Northern Empire. The Southern Empire uses Primogeniture, where the eldest child takes the throne. And the Western Empire has inheritance based off of the strongest military clan taking power. Furthermore, if the secession receives enough opposition, then a secession civil war can start, with the player being able to join a side if they are part of that kingdom. Interesting Clans is a mod that adds in several new minor clans for each faction that operates much like the native minor clans. Each clan comes with anywhere from three to four new heroes that you can encounter on the field as allies or enemies. This mod does require both Swadian and open source armory as the heroes of those clans use the armor provided in both mods. And if you want these clans to use their own unique troop line like the native minor clans, you'll need to get some additional mods that can be found on the interesting clans mod page. Otherwise, the minor clans will use regular troops instead. Interesting Companions is a partner mod to interesting clans that is intended to be used together, but can be used standalone as well. It adds 52 new custom companions with unique backstories, gear, and skills, and some that reference the clans from the Interesting Clans mod. Depending on the skill and equipment, companions can be fairly expensive with the lowest just shy of 2,000 dinars and the highest upwards to 80,000 plus dinars. Separatism is a mod I covered more in depth before, but it still makes the list due to the uniqueness it brings to each campaign. You could click on the icon in the top right corner of the video to see a more in depth look at what the mod has to offer. Spawn More Clans is a highly configurable mod that allows you to spawn more clans at set intervals to liven up the campaign map. You can set the amount of days in between spawns, how many clans to spawn, the percentage chance for clans to spawn as part of a kingdom or as a minor clan, their min-max clan tier, and the min-max age of the clan leader. After the interval has passed, you'll get a message log notifying you of the newly spawned clans. Do note that spawning many clans in short intervals can lead to instability and is best used conservatively. Unlanded Clans is a mod that adds several new smaller clans to each kingdom that start without a fief. 
kingdoms will start off stronger with larger armies now that they have an additional three to four clans to pull from. As they expand, you will hopefully see more division of land. If you pair it with diplomacy, it means more clans to join factions and start potential civil wars, on top of the civil wars from succession laws and separatism mods. Calradia at War adds in more hostile entities throughout Calradia from northern barbarians, southern slavers, robber knights, and foreign invaders. If you're ever tired of slaughtering the same small band of looters a hundred times over, Calradia at War offers a change of pace with tougher bandits and massive armies. It does require the Custom Spawns API mod as a prerequisite, which can be found in the Calradia at War mod page. Additionally, any of the Calradia at War submods, such as Scum and Villainy or Calradia Factions Enhanced, are suitable alternatives with various changes. However, using them all together creates a highly unstable campaign, so it is not recommended. It is best to just pick one and leave the rest for a different campaign. As this collection adds in a ton of new companions, lords, and clans, it is very easy to overwhelm your save file. Death for All is a way to manage the massive influx of new entities appearing on the map by making battles more costly. By default, all lords and companions, as well as the player, have a 50 times survival rate on a KO. Death for All drops that down to a 3 times survival rate, which will result in more death and keep the hero population in check. But be warned, this death rate will also affect the player, so it is best to get good. And if the 3 times death rate is too low for you, you can change it to your desired modifier in the mod files. With these 10 mods added to your mod list, your Bannerlord campaigns will be bustling with activity. If you've reached this part of the video, let me know down below how you enjoyed some of these mods or any other mods you might think fit into the theme. I want to thank you all for watching. Consider dropping a like and subscribing, and I'll see you in the next video.